Our uh, message this morning is going to be found for you in the book of Psalms, Psalm 91, if you want to turn there. Just another announcement or two. I'd like to remind you of our website. It's on the back of your bulletin, mymountainviewbaptist.com. If uh, you are interested, for example, in the message or messages that you have heard and you would like to share those with family members, uh, they can go to mymountainviewbaptist.com and uh, we have all the sermons that we have preached so far this year. Um, so if you want them, they're there, they are I, uh, archived. I'm trying to remember all these words that they use. We even have our own YouTube channel. So if you go to YouTube, you can still find us under uh, MyMountainViewBaptist.com. Uh, and so uh, if you enjoy the sermons, or if you think that, hey, that is something that I know so-and-so could use, uh, then please uh, share this information with others, and uh, they would uh, appreciate, I'm sure, uh, your concern. Also, we have a place there where you can uh, let us know of your prayer requests, if you have something that needs to be prayed for, Michael and I, uh, between us, are checking those daily. And so if you can't wait until Wednesday night or you can't wait until Sunday morning, post it there at mymountainviewbaptist.com. We will get your prayer requests and uh, we'll begin praying for them immediately. So it's a way of staying in contact uh, with us. And so please uh, feel free to use uh, that uh, asset that the church has. Also, I would like to remind you of our pray for that calendar there on the back wall. Uh, we're here now into February. And what I'd like for us to begin praying for here in February is to begin to pray for souls. Uh, folks need to be saved. Folks need to find Jesus Christ, their personal Lord and Savior. And so I would like your help in our praying for that, that you begin to pray uh, that the lost would uh, find their way here. We had a fellow that came in uh, Wednesday night. His name was uh, Melvin. And uh, he just recently moved into the area. And he said, you know, I've been going past this area for quite some time. And I just realized that your church was there. It's like it just sprung up overnight. <laughs> well, we have been here just like overnight, about 50 years or so. But uh, with all the work we're doing, the front of the church now is lit up at night with our uh, new sign that uh, Brother Richie put out there for us. And so we are much more noticeable. And it, to him, it was like, well, when did you guys put this church here? I was driving by, next thing you know, God sent a church. Right? So he came and joined with us uh, Wednesday night for prayer. And uh, that was uh, nice to have uh, him with us. And so we appreciate that. <coughs> All right, uh, Psalm 91 then, and uh, our text is going to come out of verse 11. When we get there, verse 11 is going to sound very familiar to you. You're going to say, I heard that verse before, and it's true you have. And uh, of course, I never preach anything new. My job is to preach the same old book that uh, Paul wrote and that uh, uh, Jesus helped to author along with the rest of those fellows. And so all we're here to do is to teach the same old stuff. If you're looking for a church where they're going to teach you brand new, never heard before stuff, this is the wrong place. Because we still take everything out of the Gospels and the Epistles and so I've got nothing new. i got no new uh, revelation from anybody. Just got the same old book that you have. And uh, so in Psalm 91 as we come here this morning angelic protection. This is the promise that God has made uh, to you. <coughs> I apologize. I, <clears throat> my wife is getting better. And uh, what she managed to do is to give me her cough. And uh, so she said, I don't want it anymore. You can have it. And uh, so she's not coughing as much. <clears throat> but I think I'm going to begin to cough a little bit more. So if I begin to stay away from you just a little bit, that's probably uh, why. Psalm 91. He that dwelleth in the secret place of the Most High shall abide under the shadow of the Almighty. Boy, I tell you, I'd find out where that place is and I'd camp there if I were you. Mm -hmm. I will say of the Lord, He is my refuge and my fortress, my God, in Him will I trust. Surely He shall deliver thee from the snare of the fowler and from the noisome pestilence. He shall cover thee with His feathers and under His wings shalt thou trust. His truth shall be thy shield and buckler. Thou shalt not be afraid for the terror by night, nor for the arrow that flieth by day, 
nor for the pestilence that walketh in darkness, nor for the destruction that wasteth at noonday. A thousand shall fall at thy side, and ten thousand at thy right hand, but it shall not come nigh unto thee. Only with thine eyes shalt thou behold and see the reward of the wicked. Now, this psalm is referring back to the uh, day of deliverance from Egypt. Uh, remember, the men had just eaten their Passover meal. They are dressed. They've got their sandals on. They've got their staff in their hand. They're going to eat that meal, and in the morning, they're going to leave. But that night, death is visiting throughout Egypt. And though they can hear the wails and the cries, God said, it's not going to come near you. He said to the children of Israel. So this is the preface, this is the background to uh, this uh, psalm that we are reading. Because thou hast made the Lord, which is thy refuge, even the Most High, thy habitation, there shall no evil befall thee, neither shall any plague come nigh unto thee. Remember, they've just seen seven plagues at least hit Egypt. And so God saying to them, don't worry, they're not coming your direction. For he shall give, and this is our verse, and see if it doesn't sound familiar uh, to you. And he said, and he shall give his angels <coughs> charge over thee to keep thee in all thy ways. They shall bear thee up in their hand, lest thou dash thy foot against the stone. Thou shalt tread upon the lion, the adder, the young lion, and the dragon shalt thou trample under feet, because he has set his love upon me. Therefore will I deliver him. I will set him on high, because he hath known my name. He shall call upon me, and I will answer him. I will be with him in trouble. I will deliver him and honor him with long life. Will I satisfy him and show him my salvation? The prerequisite to all those good things, you got to love the Lord. That's all he asks. If you love me, I'll give you this. Not a bad trade. Not a bad trade. So let's take a look at this angelic protection then that we have. As we said, the pestilence and all those things that were mentioned is the background to the night of deliverance. Uh, from uh, Canaan, or rather from Egypt into Canaan's land. We are kind of like that. You and I have been delivered. You and I have accepted Jesus Christ as our personal Lord and Savior. And now you and I are traveling from this land of bondage to the land beyond. And so as we travel along, we need some protection too. Because we have an enemy who, like a roaring lion, goes about seeking to whom he may devour and he's pretty powerful, i got to tell you that. But God has not left us without protection. <clears throat> His angels, he said, he has given them charge concerning you and me. Notice he said, in all thy ways. They will protect you in all thy ways. Let's consider these ways for just a moment. First of all, there are ways which are not in this promise. I don't know if you noticed it or not. He said, all thy ways, but some tracks are better left not traveled for you and for me. For example, the way of presumption. I'm a child of God, therefore nothing can harm me. I wouldn't push it that far. <laughs> Remember what the devil did when he came to Jesus. <clears throat> he took Jesus to a high pinnacle of the temple. And he said, you know what? The Bible says that God has given his angel charge concerning thee so that you can't even... Smash your toe on a rock. Why don't you jump off this temple and let God prove himself to you? And Jesus said, Tell not the Lord your God. It would have been presumptuous. I, I suppose Jesus could have done that. But what would he have proved? That the devil could get the better of him? So this idea of presumption, yes, he had a place to go, and God was going to make sure, the Father was going to make sure that the Son got to the place he needed to be. In fact, you remember when he was at Nazareth? <coughs> Nazareth is kind of built up on a hill, on a cliff. 
And remember, after he preached in the synagogue there at Nazareth, the people got mad at him. And they tried to push him off the cliff. Remember that? And the Bible says that he walked right through the middle of them, and they didn't even notice it. Why? God's going to make sure he got to the cross. This was his destiny. Nothing was going to interfere with his saving you and me. I suppose God would have spared him if he had jumped from that pinnacle. But why do that? What do you prove it? And so we have to avoid this presumption sometimes. You know, all right, if God's going to take care of me, it doesn't mean that I can get myself in all kinds of trouble. I have to, after all, still try to do the best that I can. But this presumption uh, was not a good thing. Jesus didn't give in to it, even when the devil offered it to him. Listen, if you just jump off this building, let him catch you. Watch, watch. God will catch you, God will catch you. See, some of us, we'd be tempted to bring it. You know, we try that one. Do not go up on top of the building and jump off. I don't think God's going to get you. I really don't. Because he gave you a brain. Right? But, uh, so don't, don't do it. I'm not trying to hang you on to do anything like that. So let's not do that. And so there's some presumption. There is some sin, dishonesty, lying, uh, world conformity, all those kind of you know, a lot of times we can get ourselves in good trouble. You tell a big whopper, and then we say to God, get me out of this. And we look at God like, why aren't you delivering me here? Seeing as how I'm yours. And God says, well, if you were mine, why are you telling that big whopper? Uh, you got to be careful. You can't lie, cheat, and steal, and then when the police are knocking at your door, say, oh, Lord, God delivered me from this. It will work that way. He'll deliver you into the hands of the officer. Yeah. You make sure you get there. All right. So don't... Uh, there are some things that we shouldn't be involved in. And uh, we should stay away from that, that type of stuff. The way of pride, self-conceit. Uh, those are ways that God, I don't think, will protect us. And, uh, of course, uh, we'll worship. That's where we think of ourselves. You know, sometimes we can be obstinate. We know God's saying something to us, and we don't want to listen. God says, I'll bless you if you do this. And you say, I don't think so. You know? uh, we just came over our uh, stewardship month, time, talent, and treasure. And then God says to you, I think you ought to be involved in support of my church. And we say, well, I don't think so. And now all of a sudden we find ourselves in some sort of financial need, and, God, and we go to God and say, Lord, bail me out of this. And he'll say, well... Did you give what I asked you to give? Then how can I bless you? If you're not stepping out on faith. Remember the whole thing here is about faith. If you don't use faith, you've got no connection. That's our umbilical cord to God is our faith. And if you don't stretch it, if you don't use it, hey, ain't going to do any good. And so he just kind of letting us know, you know, that we have to be careful. Now, there are ways that are safe and guaranteed. Uh, the humble way, for example, that's, that's one. Uh, faith in the Lord Jesus Christ. I have faith right here. This is what's getting me to heaven. Jesus Christ. He shed his blood on the cross so I can get there. I'm not trusting me for anything. I don't tell people, why don't you be good like I am? Yeah, that's all we need. Another one of me hanging around this place. <laughs> you know? We don't need that. What we need is Jesus Christ. We need to be more like Him, right? And so we, we could use that. If we are attempting to bring honor and glory to Jesus Christ, we can expect God to back us up on that. Now, when you try to live for God, i got to tell you, the devil don't like it. He can't do anything about the fact that I'm saved. He can't stop me from going to heaven. But he could try and stop my influence. He could try and stop my testimony. He could try and stop me from telling others about it. You know, we have to be careful of that. That's, you know, as we said, we've got to pray for that. The whole reason I was given salvation was so I could share it with other people. Period. God didn't save me just because I was handsome. 
quote that you're all thinking, oh, you know, you wouldn't have gotten it. But he didn't save me just because of me. He saved me because he knew he could place his truth inside me and would get out to other people. And so in these 40 years that I've been a Christian, I have been for 40 years telling people about Christ. And so, you know, you just have to be willing to share. Of course, as we start to share, the devil gets upset. And uh, I shared with you before, on several occasions I was in the, when I was in the Navy. And I didn't know this until the men who tried to do it confessed to me later, after I'd won them to Jesus. But I was uh, starting a Bible study on board the ship, had over 60 men, got up to about 120, I think, men. We had 800 men on the ship, and about 120 of them on Sunday and Wednesday were coming to church services on the uh, mess decks in the ship. And I would come out of my birthing area and walk on the outside of the ship and then go down. And one day, uh, when I was going there, God said, go upstairs out of my way completely. And it was strange because for three consecutive services, I walked three different paths. Had no idea why I was doing it. Just, it felt like I was supposed to take a different way. Come to find out each of those times, there were men laying in wait to throw me overboard. When you start preaching, God's enemies are going to get hold of you. These were witches. These fellows. Tonight, the guy come and woke me up and said, I gotta, can I talk to you? Sure. He said, can we go down? So I, I went down there and we're sitting there and he says, I gotta tell you something. He said, yeah, I, I appreciate it. I know he, I had just led him to the Lord about a week earlier. And he said, I, I, I have to confess to you, I tried to kill you three times. <laughs> <Okay>. <laughs> and we're down here in the middle of the night meeting wine, you know, uh, and, and then they're at, Ended up being a total of 13 of these fellows that had gotten saved over time. But as I was in the process of winning them to Christ, the devil was in the process of fighting pretty hard. And so on three different occasions they tried, and they finally figured they couldn't. For whatever reason, I was protected, and uh, they just came. So that's what led them to Jesus Christ, was the fact that I was somehow protected. And they couldn't figure that one out. And uh, so that's what I'm saying. You know, when you work for God, sometimes you're not in this fight by yourself. There are powers and principalities that would like to take you out. But God said, I've given my angels charge concerning you. And so even though I didn't know I was being protected, God had camped the army of, of, of heaven around me and would not let any evil befall me. And so I'm saying to you, you can do the work of God, and if you would like to, you know, you sit there and say, gee, I wish I had a story like that. Well, get up and start winning people to Jesus Christ. You get a story like that. That's simple. You know, uh, some of the greatest things that ever happened to you is, is when you're out telling people about Jesus. You, know, you go out there, you start telling folks, and wow, you watch the stories that you can compile very quickly. And so, again, this humble obedience to Jesus Christ, our childlike trust in Him, our strict principles, our stern integrity, those are things that often come under attack in this world, but God said He'll help you make it through. <coughs> I am tempted in every way that you are. But God has to make sure that He is protecting me. He has to watch over and protect my heart. You know, you have a right to say to the angels, to the Lord, because after all, they're his. The Bible says that they're ministering spirits to make, make to take care of you and me. Uh, Psalm 34 reminds us that they are given to serve us. And so, you know, I have a right to say, Lord, you make sure that boys are doing their job. You know? I have to pray every now and then. Because in a church like this, the devil would like to discourage people. And so, Lord, your angels have a responsibility. They've got power. You know, the devil is fighting against you all the time. You may not even notice it. But God said he has given angels to defeat them, to protect you. And I'm hoping my guys are a little better trained than the bad guys are. See, I want, like, Navy SEAL team angels <laughs> hanging around me, you know. I don't want some angel who 
like, you know, like George Bailey, he <laughs> got Clarence, right? Not me, boy, I want some guy who can take it out. I want, like, Michael the Archangel to go out there with that flaming torch and just make quick work of all of that guy. I remember when David was, or rather, when Daniel was praying and he was saying, Lord, I need to know what you're up to. And finally the angel came and said, I've been trying to get here like for two weeks. But wow, it was a battle to get here. They, the, 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 the demons of hell did not want the message to get to Daniel. And so they were surrounding him, trying to hold the force of God back. Of course, you can't stop God. But the angel said, it took me two weeks to get this message to you. I've been fighting to get to you all this time. There is a battle that you and I do not see going around us all over the place. It is here. It is raging. And so I want my guys to be like the best. And so every now and then I'll just remind the Lord, make sure you've got me some good guys. And apparently he does. Because I'm still here after all these years. You have a right to know that you're protected by the angels. You're not facing life by yourself. Sure, the devil goes around like a roaring lion seeking whom he may devour, but he's got to contend with my guardian angels as well. Those demons who would love to get a hold of me, who would love to tear me apart, they first got to get through that front line right there before they can ever get back to me. And God has made sure that I am protected. Well, not when I'm out doing my own stuff. Remember, the Holy Spirit led Jesus, we're told, right after his baptism, the Holy Spirit came upon Jesus and said, I'm taking you out to the wilderness. Not to protect him, but I'm taking you out to the wilderness so you can be tempted. So you can be tested. Every now and then, God might take you out to the wilderness just to let you be tested. But notice after the testing was done, who came and ministered to Jesus? The angels did. God might let me be tempted every now and then or tested every now and again, but then he's going to bring those angels right back in there. He may say to them, guys, just stand back just a little bit. But if the devil gets too close, then you jump in there and protect that boy. But I want him to experience just a little bit of fighting. And so we are protected. We may, you know, sometimes we forget about it, but you read your Bible, particularly after Hagar. You don't see a whole lot of angels outside of uh, when we talk about the Garden of Eden, the angel that was kept there to keep them out. But then when we come to Hagar, after Hagar, you're meeting angels all the time in the Bible. They exist. And they exist for your protection. His angels, the angels belong to Jesus Christ, and Jesus Christ sends them out to watch over you, if you love him. Because he knows if you love him that the devil hates you automatically. And he'd like to get a hold of you. But he can't. Because I'm protected by a power much greater than I. Not only by God's sovereign power, but he has placed specific angels around about me. And so while I'm walking as a believer, I am secure. The Lord himself concerned himself enough about me to make sure to assign to me a couple of angels to keep me protected. He gave his angels charge over thee. He will personally command them, boys. They have to answer to Jesus Christ if the devil gets through to me or to you. See, those holy beings, they have an eye on God's children. You know, sometimes we wonder. You know, but each one of us is personally watched over, charged over you to keep you. That's the promise. This watch is perpetual. It says, in all your ways, always. Yet wherever I go, as long as I go, till I get to heaven, I have got their escort with me. When I was traveling by sea, I was protected. Traveling by air, I've been protected. However I have traveled and wherever I have traveled to. I told you about the time that fella tried to 
take my life. He put me in the back of his little trike. I, all I wanted to do is to go up the road. I didn't even want to ride. I was willing to walk, but this guy was begging me to, to, to let me have a ride on his, his, his trike. It was only going to cost me uh, 10 centavos or something like that, and not a whole lot of money. And so, sure, okay, take me up there about two blocks, and I'll give you a peso or two. But instead, he takes me into some dark alley. Then threatens that they're all going to kill me out there in some dark alley. Well, he forgot one thing. I wasn't there by myself. So he looked at me and he said, you know, I can whistle and all my friends will come out and they'll kill you right back here. No one will ever see you. I spotted one of the policemen up the road. They have what they call the integrated police. It was the army and the police units together. I said, you see that integrated policeman up there? All I got to do is scream. He'll turn around and shoot both of us. <laughs> the guy said, what? I said, yeah, if I scream, that policeman's going to turn around with them 16. He ain't even going to look. He's just going to turn around and gun the whole area. I said, now here's the deal. If I die, I'm going to heaven. How about you? I said, tell you what, you give me all your money, I'll let you come back up the street and I won't call I won't scream, I won't cry, I won't do nothing. The guy had to give me all his little centavos. <laughs> See, you don't mess around with somebody who's got God on his side. You just don't do it. It don't make good sense. Right. So we get back up there, and he gave me all of his money, and I felt kind of bad, because I didn't need it. I'm a rich American, after all. I was a Navy. I made $300 a month. Yeah, $300 a month. Eat your heart out, people. <laughs> and so I got all this fabulous wealth. And so I gave, once we got back up there, I gave him back all his money, gave him a track, told him about Jesus. Think that you don't mess with God's anointing to You don't mess around with somebody who's got angels protecting him because it makes you say crazy stuff and do crazy things because you know you're protected. And so you just watch over these things. You know, here we are with the elite of heaven watching over us. These noble guards that we have. And they come to us by the command of Jesus Christ himself. That's pretty good. Stop and think that today Jesus has thought on you. He knows what you may face and what you might go to or through. He knows how bad the devil would like to get a hold of you and stop you. So he says, Alice's going to be facing a tough time. Hey, Sam, you and George, go down and watch over her. I don't know what angel names are. Could be Sam and George, for all I know. I know on one was named Clarence, and so Sam and George said, excuse me. Right? He knows what struggles you're going through. He knows when you're patient. Remember when Miss Ella came to us on Wednesday night, she said, did you start praying for my patients? Because I need some. And so we began praying. The Lord said, you put a couple of angels over there to help her out. That was big time, didn't it? God knows what you're going through and what your testings are. He knows that you need them angels watching over you, protecting you. He knows that this world is not your home and you cannot make it through this life without his help. And so not only do we have Jesus Christ, not only do we have the Holy Spirit, but we also got bodyguards, the angels themselves. Man, how much more protection than that do you need? Why should I be afraid? And why should I fear? <coughs> People sometimes ask me, you know, you don't seem to be afraid of very much. I'm afraid of only two things in life. My mama and my wife. <laughs> That's it. That's it. I have faced most of the bad guys already in life. I'm an old man, I've been around a long time. And I have learned there's only two great fears in this whole world. My mama and my wife. Other than that, I ain't afraid of nothing. Because I'm not too sure that Jesus won't let her just poke me in the head every time. <laughs> right? And you know, mamas are always on God's side. God's always in trouble with mamas. He just say, Mama, go ahead and slap that boy. <laughs> so don't argue with them. Why shouldn't I? 
be courageous when I've got such company. When you travel in the company of angels, what do you got to worry about? That's how come we get so many prayers answered here. These angels are quick to take the message back to heaven and say, hey, you know what they need? Take it back down there. Just remember the safety and the security that you have. Jesus says, I have you in my hand and I am in the Father's hand. And if that's not good enough for you, I'll station a couple of angels around you too. I've been through this life. I have seen the boys at work. They've never let me down. Never let me down. I told you several times people have put guns in my head. Still ain't got no holes in it. Right? Age is protecting. And they protect stupid people because sometimes you say dumb stuff. But God's been there. I mean, tell you, I wouldn't have made it very far in this life without God's help. I started right before, and I told you this last week, just before I got saved, the devil tried to drown me. Somebody had to hold me up in the water. I was going down for the third time. Finally, that <coughs> lifeguard spotted us out there in Huntington Beach, come in and saved us. But them angels are probably down there holding us up. I'm thinking I'm drowning. They're just pulling me down every now and then, pushing me back up, pulling me down, pushing me back up. They thought I was funny. Hey, watch this. This guy gags like crazy. Watch, want to see him scream like a little girl? I go. They, just, they were going to never let me get hurt. They was just having fun. And when I get to heaven, they're going to find out how funny that was. Because the Bible says I get to judge them. Yeah, now they'll find out what kind of vengeance is mine. <laughs> Full of my feet, well, okay, I'll show them. But see how glorious God is. Not only do we have His promise of protection, not only do we have the Holy Spirit, but we've also got His army. Each and every one of you is guaranteed angelic protection. When you're doing His work, when you're struggling in prayer, let me tell you, when you're down on your knees, you know all of this. Hell would like to grab hold of you and just jump on you and say, don't you ever pray. Listen, as much as we get accomplished in this building because of prayer, don't you suppose the devil would like to stop us? Mm -hmm. But he can't. Because God sends the boys and they camp around this building when we gather in here for prayer. It's a wonderful place. And so I just want to remind you that you've got God's protection, that you have angelic protection. You ought to go through your Bible and look up some of them verses about angels protecting you. You ought to read about their power. Oh, they've got greater power than we do, we're told. Peter talks about them. Peter knew them. Remember that night Peter was in jail for being a good Baptist guy? He went to jail for preaching. And we're told that in the middle of the night, the angel came over and kicked him in the ribs. <laughs> He kept saying, hey, Peter, wake up. Hey, Peter, wake up. Peter was like, he didn't wake up. So we're told that he kicked him in the rib. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Imagine you laying down there. You're already in jail. You're feeling bad. And some angel come by and kicked you in the rib. Mm -hmm. Get your attention. And then the angel opened the door and let Peter on out. Angelic protection. Paul said, hey, I was standing there. And all of the next thing I know, there was an angel standing next to me. A lot of those, you read your New Testament, you see how often. Read the book of Hebrews where you're promised that angelic help. Yeah. See, we, we take them for granted because we don't see them. That's one of the problems with God. You know, God's invisible. It's kind of hard to introduce people to invisible folks. Hey, that's my invisible girlfriend. My wife won't even know her yet. <laughs> See, it just doesn't work. People are going to think you're crazy. You go around talking about invisible people. These are all my invisible sons and daughters. These are, you know, people think you're crazy. You can't talk about invisible people without folks thinking you're crazy. So when you start talking about God, the first thing they say is, well, you ever see him? And what do you say? No. But I talked to him this morning, didn't you? Crazy people. Talking to an invisible God. And then they all say, what did he say back? 
I just quoted some verse out of the Bible. Here's what he told me. Can't go wrong with that. Talk to me about angelic protection. God loves you. And God's going to protect you until you get to heaven. Don't you worry about it. When life looks like it's at its worst, you are protected. 